Hello and welcome to a new edition of Interview I with Irene. Today my guest is the lovely and talented Marie Hogan who will talk with us a little bit about her actual work and also her and Vokesi. <laughs> so, welcome, Erin. It's a pleasure to have you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> and um, how about could we start by you telling us a little bit about your background? Yeah. Um, I am, uh, I'm an actor and a gamer and uh, an advocate, and I, I grew up in St. Louis. I started there, um, got my education there, and then moved out to Los Angeles to uh, keep making movies, kind of mm -hmm. got tossed into horror, and uh, now I'm doing more TV and stuff like that, so... That's so cool. I saw you on the way down Evan. You were <laughs> Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so how did you get into acting? Um, well, when I was younger, I actually always wanted to be a singer. And, um, you know, when you live somewhere where there's not a ton of films if you're not in like New York or LA or something like that uh, you kind of have theater to do first and so singing and dancing and acting were all lumped together mm -hmm. and um, so I, I did a lot of community theater and then I started doing some like underground professional theater um, and then I started doing I have like Marvels, why'd you get a hair on my face? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I started doing uh, student films at uh, one of the local universities and discovered that I actually really did like acting a lot and it was a really good outlet. So um, I just kind of kept doing that and building a resume and meeting people. <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, do you have a favorite role? Oh, um, I think, I think still my favorite role, if I have to pick one, it's still dwelling. Um, it was just something that it was the kind of film and the kind of character that I always wanted to do. And it just came up at a time where I was like, I need to do something that's not the same thing that I've been doing and it, it it came up at just exactly the right time and it was a really great script and a really great crew and I just had so much fun um doing that kind that kind of film with you know no it wasn't like a gory thing like I'm more known for I guess it was uh you know a, more of a psychological thing and that's the kind of horror movies I like personally so. Me too. Yeah. 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 I'm not that big of a horror fan, but if I do watch horror, I like the psychological ones. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones I really like. They really, like, they, they make you think a little bit and get more a little more involved, you know? So that's what I, I, I don't know. I think that's why I like them so much. Right. <laughs> Yes, so, um, and also you moving on to your advocate work, you do a lot with mental awareness. Yes, could, I do. <laughs> could we talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you know, I have known for a very long time since before I was um, even diagnosed that something wasn't quite what you would consider normal in my head. I seemed really 
I, I knew that everybody around me seemed much happier than I was for since since I was pretty young. And um, when I was finally diagnosed, then all of a sudden it was like, well, she, you know, has this thing. She's crazy and something's wrong with her. And I was like, that's not it at all. If anything, I'm I'm better because now I know what's going on and I can talk to somebody about it and I can receive, you know, medication that would help. Um, which is the route I went. Not everybody goes that route, but it, you know, that's what I needed. And it, it the, the whole s- stigma against actually having any kind of um, like a mental condition whatsoever just really bothered me. And it really, it really, it bugged me. And I found comfort in the fact that other people experience the same thing, but I also got really mad, like because I thought maybe people just don't like me, and they're finding something to be upset with me about. But I found out that it it was a stigma that a lot of people hold against everybody who has you know depression or an eating disorder or anything, and I just it it creates this space in our society where people feel like there's something wrong and they feel like they need to talk to somebody and they don't reach out because what are their friends and family going to think? Are they going to sit there and stare at me like I'm going to explode at any second? Or, you know, um, I just don't, I don't think that that's a healthy place for our society to be. So I really, I really advocate for just trying to understand other people trying to be empathetic and I try to you know do um like charity live streams and um you know donate and encourage people to donate and get out and uh walk with things like um the out of the darkness walk and things like that to just kind of show people like hey I'm here I'm still doing my thing I got help and I'm I'm doing really, really well. I feel like a normal human being, whereas before I didn't. And you can do that. And maybe people are going to look at you like you're nutty and you don't want that. But the more of us who are open and honest and the more that organizations are able to put our money and our resources towards helping people feel comfortable being open and honest, then the less and less Uh, impactful the stigma is going to become and hopefully the less and less things like suicides we have. I agree with all of that. So, yeah. 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 And then, um, I can relate to, I had to go therapy is really essential for a lot of people. Yeah, I definitely agree. And there's no shame in in needing to reach it. And you can and you can reach out if you're if you're that worried about it, you can reach out to a therapist and they can't tell anybody unless you say you've done something or illegal or thinking of doing something illegal. You know, yeah, they they can't they can't go and tell your parents that you've come there. If you're, you know, an 18 year old that they can't go tell your friends. It's somebody you can talk to who can't go around telling everybody what you said. If if anything, it's just it's just a great outlet to get your feelings off your chest. Right, and it's important that a lot of people know that they have this resource. So, um. Actually, on a lighter note, we already saw Mr. Marvel, so yes. he's so hi. cute. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> and that's you. Look at you're on her shirt, Marbles. <laughs> <laughs> So lovely. So how long have you had him? Um, 
I think I've had him for about six years. Mm. Um, yeah, I was I was fostering and working with um, an, another thing that I that I do with this my spare time when I have it and when I have the time and resources is um, foster animals from shelters who need new homes. And um, I was working with this group who had him and uh, I, I, I was fostering another dog and they threw him at me and uh, yeah, he, uh, then he, ne he never went back. He's, <laughs> he's mine now. <laughs> I just, I, you know, it, it took a little while for him to warm up to the household and everything. But once he did, I, I knew that like this, this was the, the, the new dog that I needed and he needed me. And so I just, I went up there and I gave them the money to adopt him. They're like, where's Mr. Marbles? I'm like, Oh yeah. And no, he's at my house and you're not getting him back. <laughs> there you go. He's been adopted. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm sure you two make each other very happy. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's the that's the great thing about rescue animals. Really, animals in general, but mm -hmm. um, just you know, being having somebody who like depends on you and loves you unconditionally. Um, particularly if you have like depression or anxiety or anything and you have those days where you don't want to get out of bed well you know this little guy can't open a can and feed himself <laughs> so i i have to do it i have to do it and in return he just he loves me and comforts me when i'm sad and lis <laughs> listens to my my problems and doesn't tell anybody <laughs> you know they're just they're really ha having a an animal that you can actually as long as long as you're able to take care of it it's it's very very therapeutic they're right. really just great friends loyal uh, loyal partners in crime <laughs> uh, I, i'm always thinking right now my job is kind of demanding but I think eventually I'd like to adopt another dog too. Um, another thing you're big on is going to the gym and working out. How has that affected your quality of life? Oh, <laughs> wow. It has changed. Hi, sweetie. Uh, he's just looking up at me like, what are we doing? <laughs> yes, mom. How has this affected your quality of life? I want to know. Um, no, it's definitely, it's helped me a lot. And I, I thought it was so cliche when people were always saying, oh, you need to, you know, eat better and work out more. And I'm like, well, I'm an athlete and I eat pretty healthy like mm -hmm. I that's not going to solve all my problems but everybody's body is so different and I, I was eating what we all think is healthy and it's not bad for you it's much better than what the average American eats <laughs> but it what it didn't agree with my body I had um all kinds of just um, I had like problems in my gut. I had a lot of um, aches and pains, like arthritis and tendonitis and things like that from not moving enough and in like a good healthy way that would work my muscles and stretch them and, and all of that. And when I really started going to the gym and when I found out the foods that bother, that bother me and cause me to have those problems, I stopped taking so many of the medications that I was prescribed for all of these conditions that I've had since I was like 16. Um, I just, I, you know, occasionally I get tendonitis or an arthritis flare up or something like that. Uh, it may like, you know, maybe something snuck into whatever I was eating, or maybe it's just, you know, my, my body's just not happy. It's the weather. It's, you know, whatever. But overall, on a day-to-day -day basis, I am 
so much more um, alert mentally and my body feels so much better. And I just feel better about myself as well if I've finished a workout and I know like I have completed something that is good and healthy for me today and um, over time it is going to make me find myself personally more aesthetically pleasing, which makes me happy as well. But that's kind of just like a side effect of, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a positive side effect of of doing things that are good for your body. So Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of even, you know, if you like never leave your house, even if you just start getting up and trying to take like a 30 minute walk around your neighborhood and listening to music, that's going to change your perspective so much. And it's going to change your body and make you feel a lot better but there is a there is a learning curve but you can start slow and you'll feel so much better all right that's that's true i i should go to the gym more often but when i do i do feel better like you said that my end <laughs> yeah my up, so i'll yeah. go to um, any other interesting tidbits or hobbies? Um, yeah, so during, <laughs> so be, being an actor is kind of, uh, well, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a, it's a full-time job that you don't get paid for and you don't leave your house very much, um, until you get that, until you get the part. And then, you know, you work long hours and you you get the pay and you feel really good and you have something to show for it. But so much that people don't see is behind the scenes, like me, my agent, my manager, all of us sitting at our computers, just writing emails back and forth, um, sending, you know, casting calls, um, like applying for casting calls every single day, um, making sure that my resume, my website, my social media, my headshots, everything is up to date and doing a lot of self-care because I'm not, um, you know, when you're a working actor, you're not like, I don't know what's a big, uh, like a, you're not like Emma Stone or something like that. Um, You, you don't get, you don't always get a, a great deal of like advance notice or anything like that. So I look a certain way in my headshots and if I allow my skin to break out and I let myself go a little bit to the point that I don't look like I do in my headshots, that's going to be a problem because I might get called in tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. and I can't suddenly look like that if I look completely different right now. So there's, um, you know, there's things that go into that. The gym definitely helps that. Um, but all that goes into it. And then I'm ki- I was kind of left at home playing video games by myself uh, <laughs> after finishing all of that. Um, so I just decided to start streaming it. it. It was a hobby and I decided to start streaming it on Twitch. And I was like, maybe some people who watch my movies will watch me play video games. But I'm going to be playing video games anyway. And, you know, if people talk to you in the chat while you're playing and you have to sit there, you have to answer them. If there's nobody there, you basically have to talk to yourself and look stupid. So it has, it has helped me as well with speaking to people I don't know and speaking in front of people. And that's really useful in like the audition process and, um, and things like that as well. But yeah, I've been gaming, um, all the time, unless I, unless I have a role I'm on as soon as all my acting stuff and my adult stuff where I have to clean and do grown up things as soon as all that's done then I'm playing video games live (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah um any advice for future actors yeah um I so my my real my my real advice for anybody who's like in this business like um maybe they went to school or they did one or two things and they want to know how to get into it 
is really do everything that you can that you're comfortable with. Um, and make sure you, you know, as you're, and what you're comfortable with might change over time. Um, right. you know, so, ma- but make sure that he, you know where that line is and take all the parts that, that don't cross that line for you, wherever that line is. And, you know, no, nobody can tell you that you need to do something that you don't feel comfortable with or, or anything like that, then that's just not the kind of career you want to have and you're not going to be happy in life. Um, I'm personally comfortable with quite a bit, but not everybody's like that. So know where you're, know, you know, where you want to draw the line um, and take all the parts that you can if you don't have any experience or a whole lot of experience and build up a lot of good clips, different things, maybe doing student films or doing really small productions, um, you know, good clips that look good, where your acting is good, that look different, that you're really proud of. And that way, when you start looking for those bigger roles, you're already going to be ahead of the game because you've got this proof that you can act it's on tape it's uploaded to your casting websites and you have that proof for people to see and they're like okay i can see i see this person on screen right now i know that they can do what i'm asking them to do so maybe we'll bring them in as opposed to this other person who doesn't have you know a a good looking clip from a student film or something like that that shows they can cry or shows that they can play you know, like a real badass or something like that. Um, I would say that's the biggest thing. The other thing that I just kind of want to, I always, I always have to say it when, when I'm asked this question, because I get so many emails from people being like, I'm, I want to be rich and famous. And can you point me to um, an agency or like a magazine that will come take my picture and write a story about me. And I I just, I stopped answering after a certain amount of those emails because I can't reiterate enough that if you're acting for the money, then you are in the wrong business. Um, if you, you know, you, you act because you love it. And if, if you succeed, if you do really well, if you work really hard, then you can make really good money or you can make a living. Um, but for most people that, doesn't happen. So I, I can't reiterate enough. Like you, you have to be doing this because you love doing it. It's long days. It's, you know, when you're starting out, it's little to no pay. Um, and not everybody's going to know your name and know who you are like that. It's, it's just not how it works. So if you want to make money, you can do it here, but it's unlikely. So maybe go into another field, <laughs> like work for a Fortune 500 company or something, because <laughs> it's mm. it's just it's it's um the the rate of success in this business is, is not is not the uh, most promising. So just you know know that going in, be be aware of that going into it. <laughs> we can't all be Emma Stone. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> But I truly believe you have this potential and I'm looking forward to your future project. Oh, well. <laughs> thank you. That's so sweet. I, you know, I, I do my best and I just try to, I, I just really enjoy this and I've, I've never known anything else, you know, so luckily I have people who support me who, hi, honey, who support me, who believe in me. And um, uh, that makes it a, a little bit easier. But yeah, when you when you love it and and this is what you want to do and you haven't known anything else, then uh, another career just it doesn't even cross your mind. It's not really an option. And that's how you need to be if you want to make it in entertainment, you know? Um, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, Mr. Marvel. Oh, hey, hi. hi. <laughs> oh, thank, thank both of you for joining us and hopefully we'll have you on a future episode too yeah absolutely I'd love to come back anytime 
Thank you again and have a good night. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye.